All right, so we're back with Ryan Dice. Ryan Dice, again. you heard of Ryan Dice. Hopefully you have. If you've been listening to this show, I, like I said before, we mentioned Ryan at least a couple of times uh, on every episode. Well, I wouldn't say on every episode, but uh, Ryan's obviously been a huge influence on me as well as on Cosm. Here, we'd like to think that you know we've got our digital marketing start from this guy. And the funny thing is, I'll tell this story. The uh, Ryan's... 43 split tests was the first internet marketing, digital marketing info product I ever bought. And I didn't buy anything between that. I think it was like sold for like $47 or I think it was $43 because it was like a was dollar really? for every split test. I think right. so. Yeah. It's it was an amazing value. And then I don't think I bought anything for two years until I bought War Room, which was like $30,000. So I was the ultimate upsell. And I remember telling you this story. You're like, I wish I had more guys like you. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah the best. So, so you go from that to this. So anyway, so we ended up uh, going from that small split to 43 split test. This is my entry level uh, offer all the way to joining War Room. And this was back, oh my God, seven plus years ago. And I remember I was at, I think Molly had invited me to, let's see, I forget which conference it was for Digital Marketer. But anyway, so the pitch at the end was for War Room. And I realized, okay, I had about $11,000 in my checking account at that point in time. And we did not have a million dollar business, which was which was sort of an entry point. We we're kind of close. We we're getting there. Not quite there as of yet. And million dollars in ad spend under management. Million dollars in ad spend under management. Yeah. That was probably more like it. Not necessarily. We would say revenue. million dollar momentum back in the day. Right. You're getting right. there. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You're you're on your way. You're on your yeah. way. Uh, so it was actually it was the machine event. So I was like, this is great. You came yep. on. You pitched it. I was like, you know what? I, I think I want to join this thing because. First off, I knew like the type of marketer that was in that room, the type of business that was in that room could really help the business. I knew that I would learn a whole lot. Obviously, I might have the chance of actually meeting and talking with you at some point, which I eventually did, and we became friends. Uh, and it was one of those events and one of those moments in my life where I was like, do you do it? Do you not do it? And it was the ballsiest move, I think, at that point in time. I wrote a check for 10 grand. I just happened to have it. And I knew the check would clear with like a thousand to spare. And that was it. And from that point on, like really my business from, a, from not only your advice and all the things that we were able to do inside War Room, we met a lot of folks. This is when Facebook ads was really sort of first taking off. You know, we called ourselves sort of the agency at that point. We didn't really even have Tier 11 as a brand name. And everything just sort of went from there. We got a lot of customers from there, a lot of great advice. And then we, I think it was maybe the third or fourth event where you got up on stage and you said, hey, who here, raise your hand, has a podcast? And I remember there was like one guy at that point. I don't know, he had like really long hair, uh, you know, not like Cossum, but like, you know, kind of scraggly and like he, he obviously knew what he was doing, but he was the only guy who raised his hand. I was like, wow, Brian wants to start a podcast. And then the next one, I remember we were at, let's see, the Beverly Hills Hotel that we always went to, uh, the Meritage. Yeah, the Montage. Montage. Montage Beverly Hills. Montage Beverly Hills. You did it again. You said, all right, who here has a podcast? And two people raised their hands. like, you know, I'd really like to start a podcast someday. So I remember I texted my then partner, Keith, and I had already known Molly now for maybe six months or so from that event. I said, hey, you want to start a podcast? And all three of us on this group text were like, yeah, that's great. I said, well, Ryan just said he wanted to start a podcast. Maybe we could start a podcast with you guys and have it under the digital marketer umbrella. And they're like, go for it. I'm like, all right, I've never talked to Ryan before. So at the break, I remember you were like grabbing coffee at one of those big silver coffee things. Like everything is silver and shiny, you know, at this hotel that I was clearly in over my head or room that I couldn't afford. And so I went up to you, I asked you, I said, hey, would you like to start a podcast? And your answer was yes. And I was like, great. He's like, and then you said, I don't actually want to be on the show though, but I've got just the person that might want to be your co-host. And I said, is it Molly Pittman? And you're like, yeah. I was like, I already asked her and she's in. And you're like, Jesus. I have, I have no authority in this company. People are doing stuff behind my back all the time. I don't even know about 
And that's how it all started. And so that was eight years ago. And we obviously worked together. We launched it. We did like five shows, launched it together, figured out the name Perpetual Traffic, and then started it from there and had a great run. And uh, obviously, a couple of co-hosts later, Cosmo sort of came on the scene. And then about late last year... <laughs> nice of you to crowbar me into that story, Ralph. I'm not relevant <laughs> at all, really. And, and, uh, it was like just another hired yeah, guy. Here I am, like up. awkward, doughy-eyed, just and, like yeah. looking at you like, yeah, yeah. Uh, finally... Get a, get a haircut you know, and get a real job, buddy. <laughs> we needed a guy with long hair. That, yeah. and he, so he fit the bill, yeah. you know? Fit the suit, so to speak. So we had this... Uh, what I felt was a very successful period of time. And it just didn't really fit into your guys' business model. So maybe we can take it from there, sort of how this whole thing transpired. Because obviously here we are still talking with each other. It all worked out for everyone in the end. But maybe tell us about like, what was it in your business that had changed? Like what sort of, why did perpetual traffic no longer fit in with what you guys were doing with Scalable and with Digital Marketer? And then sort of we can take it from that point. Yeah, so I'll give you a little bit of backstory maybe you don't, you're not even aware of. So I was toying with the idea of, of having a podcast. And you're right. I didn't want to do a podcast. I wanted to have a podcast, which to me is a different animal. I've always more identified as a publisher than a creator or an influencer or anything like that. I never really wanted to be in the limelight um, as much. I, you know, I'm in it plenty, but um, I, it's not really necessarily a role that I, that I ever embraced. And so, but I felt like as a business, it's something that, that we should have a digital marketer. I was kind of toying with the idea. I'm prone to thinking out loud. And I was thinking out loud one day uh, in front of the team. And yeah, Molly Pittman, who was our um, head of marketing at the time, was, uh, was like, yeah, I want to do that. Let's do it. And I was like, absolutely. I love the idea of you doing it. She's like, great. I'm going to do it. I was like, no, don't do it yet. Because we're pretty thorough in terms of how we do our strategic planning, right? We, we make sure we've got certain key initiatives and there's certain things that we will green light in a quarter. I was like, don't do it now. Let's gather some research. We got enough stuff to say grace over here. Let's let's maybe pick it up next quarter if, if things are going well. And she's like, but I don't want to wait that long. And I was like, okay, I'll tell you what. If we can get all this stuff done before the end of the quarter, then fine, we can go nuts. And so when I was going out to War Room and saying like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, that was me gathering information for something that's going to happen way in the future. Mm. Well, around that same time, sure enough, we'd hit all our goals and we got all our stuff accomplished before. And so I'm always like, I'm in, like, I want to do it. And um, that was around the same time when you had reached out to her. That's why she pounced. Um, but the truth is, we never really went into this strategically. It was always something that, you know, having a podcast was always something that I knew we needed, but it wasn't clear to me how it was going to fit back in. And because we didn't necessarily approach it strategically, it never really had a, like a home inside of digital marketer, you know, it was this separate brand, it was run by, you know, uh, other people eventually, you know, Molly left the company and started her own thing. And now she's, you know, with Ezra, you know, you and um, I mean, like nobody was in digital marketer. Right. And so it wasn't really like digital marketers podcast, which I don't care about that. I don't have any pride of ownership. But it's like, if we're if we're kind of funding this thing, if if we are, you know, if if we're gonna give it some energy, it needs to flow back in. And this is a mistake that I think a lot of marketers make. Uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners make. They're not clear on how they actually create value as a company, how they create and capture value. Um, they haven't mapped it out. They haven't visualized it. They haven't said, this is how we actually turn strangers into leads, into customers, into raving fans. They haven't mapped that out. You know, I've been talking about this forever, whether it was the nap million dollar napkin or the customer value journey um, or, you know, growth engines, something we've been talking about and something that I'm very adamant. Anything that we're going to do needs to funnel back into an existing proven growth engine. And the podcast, it could do it sort of through ads. It could do it sort of through host reads, but it didn't have a clear through line. And because of that, it just never got the resources that I felt like it deserved. And, um, but I always loved the show and I always loved the, the brand and, and the following and what it produced. And now, I mean, it came to a point where it's like this, we are not the best people to own this because we are not, we are not just honoring this asset. We're not a good steward of this asset, not because the asset isn't worth it. It's because it is worth it, that it's, it should be under another steward. You know, at the time, like we had different leadership at Digital Marketer who felt that there needed to be a Digital Marketer branded podcast. And so Digital Marketer now had launched its own podcast. So I'm like, well, 
how many podcasts are we gonna have for this one freaking brand? Like, this doesn't make any sense at all. So that was why, you know, ultimately it was like, hey, maybe we should figure this out. And honestly, dude, I don't remember if you reached out to me or if I reached out to you. Um, I, I don't remember the triggering event, but I think, you know, sometimes just this multiple people realize come to the same conclusions at the same time because everybody's feeling the same thing. Everybody has good intentions. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was where kind of when we were reevaluating at the end of last year, um, you know, what are the assets that we have that are currently underutilized? Do we want to double down on them or do we want to exit them? Right. And we had to be honest and look at, uh, we had to be really honest and look at perpetual traffic and say, this just isn't an asset that, that we are going to be a good steward of. Let's look at exiting it. And right. so that's, uh, that's ultimately the backstory and where it ended up. And I'm really happy with, you know, that it found an amazing home with, you know, with you guys and that it's still rocking and rolling and that you still let me on from time to time.